Hello, fine people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley. This is my co-host, Ella. And today we are here to talk to you about alfalfa pellets or alfalfa meal and how exactly you should apply it to your garden or even your house plants. Ella here was at the greenhouse. That's you was at the greenhouse with me this weekend. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have gotten all the juicy shots of her screaming her face off in greenhouses, saying hello to everybody and just absolutely loving the greenhouse vibes. Um, I do take her to greenhouse shopping with me. So long as it's not too cold or it's not too hot, I aim for around the high teens, low twenties. Once it gets out of that range, then her greenhouse uh, trips for the year are done. So right now in spring is the perfect time for Miss Ella to enjoy her outdoor trips, which is why she came with me. So if you guys want to see juicy updates on Ella's greenhouse adventures, then be sure to come follow me on Instagram. So today for alfalfa, we're going to be taking a very different look than you've probably ever seen alfalfa pellets or alfalfa meal looked at. This took me down a rabbit hole and I was just going to go with my normal narrative when it comes to a soil amendment or a soil fertilizer. However, this time I'm taking a very broad um, and overarching view of alfalfa in and of itself just to make it a little bit different than what I've seen on the internet to date. So this is going to be something that I'm hoping you've never seen before. Let's jump into exactly alfalfa, what alfalfa pellets or alfalfa meal is. I think it's important to note that alfalfa pellets are exactly the same as alfalfa meal. Alfalfa pellets are essentially something that has alfalfa that has been compressed and dehydrated into pellets and then maybe possibly held together with some sort of plastic polymer or a natural um, binder of some sort. And I'm sure you could figure out what that binder is just by simply looking in the back of the package. Now, they're gonna act the exact same way in a soil system. If you apply pellets to the garden and you water those said pellets, they're simply going to expand and they're going to become the loose fibers that the alfalfa meal was anyways. So it's really up to you how you wanna do it, but they are the they are identical. Now there isn't really anything added into them. It is straight alfalfa greens um, or hay, and there's no additions unless you get a brand that has some sort of addition in it, but for the most part, it is straight alfalfa. So I don't want to call alfalfa a fertilizer because it's not really a fertilizer. It actually has less fertilizing properties to it, in my opinion, than something like a compost or manure. I would actually refer to alfalfa as more as of a soil amendment because alfalfa is an organic material, meaning it's going to act very similar to the addition of peat moss to a soil structure. It's going to help with the soil structure itself. It's going to help with moisture retention. It's going to help with microbial activity, and it can be added to compost, mulch, or the soil itself. It really doesn't matter. You can't over apply this stuff. You're not gonna burn your plants. You could put a solid inch of it on your plants and nothing would happen. Honestly, you could probably grow in it and nothing would happen besides some nutrient deficiencies and probably some root rot. But honestly, it, there's not a lot of salt in it. There's, it's just a very basic, basic thing. It would, the equivalent of a fine mulch is more so the way I would look at it. Nutrient wise, I would, again, place it very, very low in the spectrum. It's much lower than compost. It's much lower than manure. It's much lower than inorganic fertilizers. And it's probably closer to something like a mulch. So there's not a lot there. If you're looking for the benefits of alfalfa, I actually highly recommend interplanting alfalfa. And we did a whole video on that and I will be doing that this year just to kind of give you guys an idea of how it works. Because it's really good at retaining moisture and building a better soil structure, it also is equally as good for a drought season or for a sandy soil. So a soil that's not very good at retaining moisture. The addition of alfalfa is a great substitute to adding things such as peat moss. 
simultaneously adding alfalfa will repress, repress weeds, especially if it's in a high enough quantity to leave more of a layer on the soil surface. So that's kind of something to keep in mind as well. So a few things we've covered so far in this video, alfalfa meal and alfalfa pellets are identical to each other. They act the exact same way. You cannot over apply either of these products and they are not a fertilizer so much as they are a soil amendment, meaning they amend the soil structure, they amend the soil retention, and they actually help with microbial activity, which means we don't just have to top dress with alfalfa meal or alfalfa pellets, we may actually choose to add these to our compost, for example, or to our mulch. So let's jump into some really unique properties when it comes to alfalfa that aren't so much in the realm of fertilization, but can ultimately affect your plants for both the better and for the worse. Again, if you're looking for that nitrogen addition from alfalfa, I highly recommend planting the alfalfa itself. So I think one of the most popular claims when it comes to alfalfa is the fact that it contains a specific alcohol that is studied and known to increase the rate of growth in plants. Now, this is slightly misleading and we'll get into why that is. So the alcohol in alfalfa is one dash triacantinol. So this thing, I think it has like 36 carbons. Let me just look. Oh, sorry. It has 30 car carbons, 62 hydrogens, and one oxygen. So it's a relatively large alcohol, as many are. And so in this, um, it is thought, and it has been studied, that tricantinol alcohol has the ability to actually increase growth in a plant, both below ground, so the root biomass, as well as above ground biomass. And this is because when it was studied, it was studied using roses, and it actually showed very rapid increases in growth and a very rapid increase in just cell division overall. So a larger root biomass and a larger upper biomass means larger rates of photosynthesis and more nutrient capture, which obviously means bigger, better plants and bigger, better blooms. So this rapid cell division happens through basal breaks, which is just a fancy way of saying that more cells are made, so therefore the plant gets a bit larger. So on the surface, this alcohol that's contained in alfalfa appears very beneficial. It appears to work miracles and increase growth, meaning if we applied alfalfa meal or alfalfa pellets to our garden, we would get the exact same result. However, this study was then replicated by other scientists, and these scientists who replicated the study, for example, would use common crops such as rice, corn, tomatoes. So one study in particular did both corn, did all three, did corn, rice, and tomatoes. And there was no significant increase using this alcohol or using alfalfa for this alcohol. The craziest part about all of this is that you can actually buy this alcohol separate from alfalfa pellets or from alfalfa meal. You can actually buy it as a garden additive to use on your plants. So, it does show to increase growth in some, but not all plants. Now to say that it is going to use, make huge benefits for your garden as a whole, no one knows the answer to that because you would have to test each plant individually. The fact that it, it actually benefited roses hugely, but did nothing for vegetable crops, depending on what your goal is, I mean, it's not going to do much, but that shouldn't discount from the fact that alfalfa does help the soil retain moisture, which is going to get us through a drought, which is going to get us through a sandy soil issue, which by the way, guys, um, just in the field and stuff right now for work, I'm seeing very, very dry, 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 dry land. I think this year is probably going to be a major drought year. So make sure you're utilizing whatever means you have necessary in your back pocket to help bring up the moisture retention levels within your soil.
So this brings me to my last point about alfalfa, and there was zero literature on this specific to the addition of alfalfa or alfalfa pellets to the garden. However, in agriculture, anyone who grows alfalfa or farms it will be able to tell you that there is an autotoxicity to alfalfa foliage, meaning over time, usually over a period of eight plus years, alfalfa fields will slowly begin to decline. And they found out that this is due to autotoxicity, meaning the crop itself, the foliage as it degrades and decomposes, releases toxins, which ultimately harm or reduce the level or the rate of germination in seeds in the future. So the harvest you see for the first three years is not going to be the same harvest you see at year eight. And typically you will have to either replant that or you'll have to rotate that field out to something else. With that being said, does that mean when we add this foliage that clearly is hyper accumulating some sort of substance that is toxic, will it affect our garden? And my immediate off the cuff answer is maybe. And only specifically because it's an autotoxin, it mostly will only affect legume plants. It's not going to affect a tomato per se, but it could affect plants within that family. So that is something to keep in mind. If you've been adding alfalfa to your garden for 10 years now, and you're noticing you're getting really low rates of germination in your legumes, such as peas, beans, lentils, chickpeas, that sort of thing, then it may be time to think about whether or not that's due to your alfalfa pellets. Now, this isn't permanent by any means when your field or your land or your garden is suffering from autotoxicity symptoms due to alfalfa being added. I wouldn't right away send up the red flag and say, oh, this is 100% like this, this field's done. That's not the case. Just you have to give it some time to decompose, let the microbes get rid of the extra built up stuff in the system, and then you can replant or re-add that alfalfa as you feel necessary. So maybe the proper management system for using alfalfa meal or alfalfa pellets in the garden would actually be one year on, one year off, or one year you apply rates of alfalfa and alfalfa whatever, and then the next year you maybe apply peat or coconut coir, for example. So that's something else to keep in mind. It's, it's a known fact that this happens. Hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know in the comments down below also if you use alfalfa pellets, alfalfa meal, or if you've just plain old never heard of this theory before. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and actually, ultimately, what helps the channel enormously, because you guys always ask this question, how can I help you grow? You need to be bigger. You can actually share the video. So if you share it to a Facebook forum or to a Reddit somewhere or a Discord, that helps enormously. So keep that in mind. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.